So we derived equations of vertical motion. We initially looked at when a body is projected vertically upwards. So equations of vertical upward motion. Because when a body is projected vertically upwards, its acceleration is due to gravity. And when it is going up, it is decelerated. One, the first equation becomes V is equal to U minus JT. The second equation becomes S is equal to U. Here we change S to height, vertical height H. So H is equal to UT minus L JT squared. Then the third equation V squared is equal to U squared minus 2JH. These are the three main equations of vertical upward motion. And they are similar to linear, the three linear equations. Okay. Now, when an object is also dropped from a height, okay, so when an object is dropped from a height, and here we are looking at vertically downwards motion. So this one, the object goes up like this, but for vertically downward motion, here we are looking at the object dropping downward from up down. Example, when a co um, coconut is plucked from the top of the tree, so when a coconut Okay, it's dropped from the top. When an object is dropped from a story building, okay, an object falling towards the center of the earth. This is what we are terming as vertically downward motion. This motion is actually in two aspects. There can be a situation where the body can be be falling. So we can have a situation where the body is re falling or falling, the body is falling freely. So either it is said to be free falling or it is falling freely. When a body is said to be free falling, it's, it implies that gravity is the only force which is acting on the body. So when a body is said to be free falling. Free falling. Then force of gravity is the only force. Acting on the body, acting on the body. 
in the absence of all other forces such as so in the absence of all other forces such as air resistance friction etc so when a body is said to be free falling then force of gravity is the only force acting on the body all other forces are absent so no air resistance and no frictional force or all other forces so that is what we mean by when a body is falling freely now when a body is falling freely when a body falls falls really the initial velocity the body's Leonard the presenter asked whether you are done answering the question for the yeah. exercise you give us yes you you missed that out eh? yes please Okay, later. So when a body falls freely, the body's initial velocity is zero. When a body is falling freely, the body's initial velocity is zero. Initial velocity U is equal to zero. Example, if I have an object in, in my hand and then throw it up, it will go reach the maximum height. At the maximum height, because as the object goes, up, its velocity will be decreasing progressively. By the time it gets to the maximum height, the body's velocity has decreased to zero. There, the body stops momentarily, implying that the body stops for a short while and then begins to drop, come down. Okay? When it is coming down, because Gravity is the only force acting on the body as it drops. We say the body is free falling. So when, when a coconut, dry coconut, is plugged from the stalk, it falls freely. When somebody climbs a tree and then unfortunately falls, the body, the person falls freely as he comes down. So when the body is falling freely, its velocity, its initial velocity is equal to zero. For a free falling body, for a free falling body, when you plot a graph of When you plot a graph of velocity against time, when you plot a graph of the body's velocity, V meter per second, T slash second, the graph, okay, the velocity time graph for a free falling body 
start from the origin because it starts from the origin because a free falling body has initial velocity zero. So the velocity must, must start from the origin where u is zero, t is zero. Please, are we okay? Now, as the body drops up, down, it is free falling. What happens is that as the body drops, its velocity increases with time in equal intervals. So as the body um, comes down, we realize that its velocity will be increasing with time. And this is shown here. Let's assume this is one, two, three, four. The time is changing within equal intervals. At a time t is equal to one, this will be the velocity. At a time t is equal to two, this will be the velocity. T is equal to three, this is the velocity. T is equal to four. So we realize that as time goes by, the velocity would also be increasing. Okay, so this is the velocity time graph for a body, for a free falling body or object. It's a straight line starting from the origin. Please, are you are you there? Hello. Yes, please. No one yes, is strong. Okay. So now the slope of such a graph, the slope of a free falling body is equal to the change in velocity over the change in the time. And this value is equal to J. Because when the body is dropping, the body's acceleration is due to gravity because gravity is the only force acting, is the only unbalanced. It is not balanced from the other end. So it is the only force acting on the body. So when you find a slope, which is changing velocity over changing time, and we know for a velocity time graph, the slope is equal to acceleration. And this acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity. So for, for a free falling body, its acceleration is equal to approximately equal to, we approximate it, 10 meter per second squared. Meaning, as the body falls, its speed changes by 10 meter per second within every one second. 10 meter per second within every one second. Okay. So the slope of a free falling body is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant, and is equal to 10 meter per second squared. Please, any question? Equations for a free falling body. Equations for a free falling body. When the body is free falling, its speed increases with time. Okay, and this is the reason why when somebody unfortunately falls from a height, if the height, if the vertical height is so great, their damage or injury associated to such falls very, very serious. 
Because when you are falling from a height, you will be free falling. And as the body comes down, the speed or the velocity increases with time. So by the time the person hits on the floor, the person is hitting the floor with the maximum um, speed. So as the body drops, the speed increases. So by the time the person makes that impact with the floor, the, the, the person is falling with the maximum speed. And you can imagine the impact on the ground. Okay. So when a body is free falling, the body speed increases with time. The increase in speed is always equal to 10 meter per second within every second. So equations of free falling body. One, the body accelerates. So here, J becomes positive. U plus J T. This is positive because the body accelerates. It's the speed of the falling body increases with time. But because this is free falling and the initial velocity is zero, this relation U goes to zero and so V is equal to J T. The second equation, which is H is equal to Ahan Leonard. Leonard, go ahead. Chef, is, it, is it always that the, the, the velocity over time of a free falling object due to gravity is equal to 10? Meter per second square. Yes. It is an approximated value. Sometimes it can be 9.81, blah, 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 blah. But it is often approximated to 10. Okay. Okay. You can be given 9.8. 9.814. But we often approximate that to 10. Leonard, uh, Henry. No, for this is for free falling. For free falling, the initial velocity is zero. I'll come to another situation where you will not put in be zero. Okay. So the second equation is this. Ut plus half gt squared. And for free falling bodies, because initial velocity is zero, we have h equal to half gt squared. Then lastly, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2jh. For a free falling body, because u is zero, v squared is equal to 2jh. So, these are the three main equations for a free falling body or object, equation one, equation two, and equation three. For a free falling body, please, any question? All right. Then, Let's look at another situation where a body falls vertically downwards. But this time, Henry, or, or let me call one of you to answer a question for me. 
Okay, Henry. Your name has just come to my lips. Henry, are you there? Yes. I have two objects. Okay, two markers in my hand. This one is, they are all starting from the same level. One is made to fall freely. But I'm dropping the two objects at the same time. My left hand object is dropping freely. This, my right handed object is dropping in such a way that it is being given a, a push or a force, but I'm dropping them at the same time. One is giving a push and the other one is made to fall freely. So I'm starting. In the two scenarios demonstrated, which of the objects drops, even though they are all being dropped at the same time, but which, which one hits the floor earlier? Yes, Leona. Leona, your hand is up, so go ahead. Hey, oh, you know, this is a mistake. Okay, somebody else. Cadmel, why? You are saying the one you applied force to. Cadmel, why? Tell us the reason why. Which of the two objects hits the floor first? Is it the one that is dropped? falling freely, or the one that is, I mean, are having a certain force applied or causing its movement. Camille, can you define your answer? Yeah, and hold. Share your views. Okay, we are learning, so just give me what you think. It may be right, it may be wrong. We are learning. Hilda, a great for Elizabeth, Joel, Jacob, KJC, please, uh -huh. Michael Dodu, or Leonard. Leonard, I called you earlier, you never spoke. Leonard, go ahead. Hey, I hear you. Yes, share your views with me. Which one hits the floor first? Elizabeth, Elifua, Hilda, Mada. Can you please repeat it again? Um, I have two objects in my hand. They are at the same height. I, I am dropping the two objects simultaneously. Meanwhile, this is made to fall freely. And then the, the other object, okay, is made to fall by applying a certain force on the, on the object. My question is that which one hits the floor first? Which one hits the floor first? Leonard, you always raise your hand, but nothing comes from your mouth. He's the one with the phone. Why, Yasmin? Why? Because mm -hmm. the force upon it makes it go down faster than the one that is free falling. Okay. So, Yasmin, do you expect the two objects to have the same acceleration? Do you, yes. Yasmin, do you expect the two objects to 
I mean, drop with the same acceleration. No. Okay. No. Okay. So it is true. When a body uh, is sir. hello. Sir, please, the ICT students have a uh, an ICT meeting from seven thirty to eight thirty. So how does our system are we ending? Oh, we are ending at, we started at 6, is it 6 o'clock? We are ending at, if 6, we we'll end at 8. But I'm recording, so I'll later drop the video. So, when a body is falling, by this time there is a force acting on the body. Please, we cannot say that the body is falling freely. Because for a free falling object, we know that one, its initial velocity must be zero and the acceleration must be due to gravity. Now, when there is a force acting on the object, okay, when, when the, the body or object is given a force f then the equation becomes one v is equal to u plus it's the body accelerates due to the force we must know the acceleration of the body as a result of the force given now, here, the initial velocity cannot be zero. The initial velocity cannot be zero because the force applied gives the body a certain initial velocity. Two. S or H will be equal to UT plus half a T squared. And then three, V squared is equal to U squared plus two A H. In many books, you see this because it is, because it is moving downwards, you see G, but no, the acceleration is not due to gravity. If it is due to gravity, then we expect you to be zero. But so when a body is falling, but there is a force, okay, the body's acceleration isn't due to gravity. We need to figure out the value of the body's acceleration to use. So try learn to distinguish between free falling and when the body is given an initial velocity u. For free falling, u is zero. And so g is the constant value 10 meter per second squared. When the body is given an initial velocity um, u, the acceleration wouldn't be due to gravity. It will be different. So we, the, either the question must give you that or Okay, you should figure out how. I will we'll be solving um, a question, applying both, so you so that that would enable you to at least know how to apply free falling situation and when there is an initial velocity acting on the body. Please, if you have any have question. A question. Okay. Go ahead. The H represents here represents height. But in H, vertical height. Okay. The H represents vertical height because it's a free falling body or a falling body. We don't use S to represent the distance travel. Please, any 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 other question before we look at problem solving. All right, I'm coming. 
Somebody is asking a question and I need to answer. Okay. Let's see how we can solve. We can apply what we've learned so far to answer questions. Please, I'm extracting the question, so. Please give, give me a minute, I'm coming. I saved question one. Please put the question down for me. Question one. A stone is dropped down a well. A stone is dropped down a well. If it takes five seconds to reach the surface of the water, A stone is dropped down a well. If it takes five seconds to reach the surface of the water, I, how deep is the well? How deep is the well? I, I. What is the velocity when it hits the water surface? What is the velocity when it hits the water surface? Take G to be equal to 10 meter per second squared. Take J to be equal to 10 meter per second squared. I'm going over. A stone is dropped down a well. If it takes five seconds to reach the surface of the water, I, how deep is the well? I, I, what is the velocity when it hits the water surface? Take J to be equal to 10 meter per second squared. Question two. I'm giving you a second question. A rocket is fired vertically upwards. Question one. Pardon? What was the formula for question one? I, I, what is the velocity when it hits the water surface? What is the velocity when it hits the water surface? Take G to be equal to 10 meter per second square. Philippa, good evening. Then question two. A rocket is fired Leonard, Leonard, mute yourself. A rocket is fired vertically upwards and reaches the height of 400 meter. A rocket is fired vertically upwards and reaches the height of 400 meter. I. What is the velocity of the of projection of the rocket? What is the velocity of projection 
of the rockets. Then I ask, how long does it take? Leona. I can't hear you. You can't hear me well. Yes. I'm coming. I I. How long does it take to reach the maximum height? Take gravity J to be equal to 10 meter per second squared. Okay, I'm dropping. Let me take a screenshot of it and then send send it into the group. Okay. Please. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, I thought I thought somebody called me. So give it a try, okay? Yes, try. We'll generally look at it. Okay, so I forwarded the two questions onto on the platform. So I'm giving you, as we discuss it, you mark yourself. So a stone is dropped down a well. If it takes five seconds to reach the surface of the water, if it takes five seconds to reach the surface of the water, I, how deep is the water? I, I, what is the velocity when it hits the, sub, the water surface? Take G, gravity to be equal to 10 meter per second squared. So, Clearly, it is vertically downward motion. But we are, we were not given an initial velocity to, to show that a force was acted on the body. Okay. We were also given acceleration due to gravity. And this this indicates that the body was free falling. Um, it was free falling because we were not given a certain initial velocity u to be equal to something. But we were told that we, we are to take acceleration due to gravity j to be 10 meter per second squared. And because of this, we can confidently say that then the initial velocity of the body is zero. Hence, the body is free falling. Please, are we okay? Hello, are we okay? okay. Now, equations of free falling objects. One, V is equal to GT. H is equal to half J T squared and V squared is equal to 2JH are equations we'll be using to solve our problem. 
So, I, how deep is the well? How deep is the well? What and what are we giving? A stone is dropped down a well. If it takes five seconds to reach the surface of the water. So, time taken to reach the surface of the water, we have five seconds. How deep is the well? So, if I'm, if I'm to determine uh, the height of the well, okay, how deep is the well? Then, one, I can determine this using this equation. I can determine it using this equation. So H is equal to half times time times five seconds. I have this is five. Five to the power of three, which is one to five meters. Another way to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. If I can find V, if I can find V, and then substitute it into the third one, mm -hmm. I have from the first equation, V is equal to G, this is 10, this is 5. So that uniform velocity would be 50 meters per second. Once I have this V, I can use this equation. V squared is equal to 2GH. When I make H the subject, it will also give me the same value, 125. So V squared over 2G must give me the height of the, of the well. So 50 squared over 2 times 10. What is 50? 50 squared. This is 2500. Zero, zero. Divided by 20. So 100, 250 divided by 2. 250 divided by 2. Yes. Oh, I'm waiting. So 125. So this is another way of determining the same quantity. So the height of the well, or how deep the well is, is 250, uh, 125 meters from the surface. The second question. The second question. A rocket is fired vertically upwards and reaches the height 400 meters. What is the velocity of projection of the rocket? Please, how many of you got the first one correct? Okay. All right. So the second question. A rocket is fired vertically upwards and reaches the height of 400 meters. What is the velocity of the of projection? Okay. So clearly this is vertically upwards motion. And the, the first question demands the velocity of projection. We have some standard formula, but before then, let's write 
the information given to us from the person. We are told it's the rocket reaches a maximum height of 400. So H max, we have H max equal to 400 meter. Then we are given G as ratio due to gravity to be 10 meter per second squared. And we are to calculate for the velocity of projection. Leonard. Did you answer question one I I? Question one I I. Please read it. Yes, I I I. What is the velocity when it hits the water surface? Oh yes. The water surface. That's what we calculated. We got, I think we got 50. Okay. And don't forget, this is free falling. So G is constant, meaning what it means is that the change in velocity is 10 meter per second every one second. Okay, please, I'm trying to explain something. When a body is falling freely, its velocity changes by 10 meter per second every one second. So listen, if it took five seconds, if it took five seconds to get to the surface of the water, then by the time it gets to the water surface, the velocity must be five times 10 because the velocity changes by 10 meter per second every one second. So if it took five seconds to get to the water surface, then the, by the time it gets there, the velocity must be 50. So it follows whatever we calculated. Please, are you okay? Does the explanation make sense? Yes, we calculated and got 50. But the free falling, the velocity change is uniform for every second. So if for every one second, the change in velocity is 10 meter per second, and it takes five seconds to reach the surface of the water, then it means that by the time it gets to the water surface, the velocity will be 10 meter per second times five which is 50, and we got exactly that. All right. The second question. Okay, so the rocket is fired vertically upwards and then reaches the height of 100. What is the velocity of projection of the rocket? So, if you recall, we got a standard formula. And how did we get a standard formula? We realized that when, when the body at the maximum height, at the maximum height, final velocity V is equal to zero. So if final velocity is equal to zero at the maximum height, then using H is equal to UT minus, using V, V squared is equal to U squared minus 2GH. At the maximum height, this is zero. So zero is equal to U squared minus 2GH. And then we've got the equation of maximum height from this by making sending minus 2gh to the left side of the equation. So 2 minus 2gh, when it crosses becomes positive. 2gh is equal to u squared. Where 2 as h is the maximum height, j is gravity, u is the velocity of projection, the initial velocity. And that is what the question um, desires to be determined. So 
If the maximum height is 400, then u would be equal to square root of 2gh. Square root of 2gh. Therefore, we have 2 times 10 times 400. And this is equal to 8, 0, 0, 0. Okay. What is the square root of 8,000? Let's take the square root of 8,000. Oh, your line is breaking. I'll go. Hey. Eight nine point four. Eighty eighty one. Eighty nine point four four. Go. So eighty nine point four four. Okay, so let's go over this again. We are looking for the velocity of projection of the rockets. Okay, and if you recall, for a body to go up, it requires a force. The force gives it an initial velocity. When a body is going up, its velocity decreases with time. So we say it decelerates. And deceleration is negative. This deceleration is due to gravity. So the equations for vertical, vertically upward motion become V is equal to U minus GT. One. Two, as which we are representing by H is equal to UT minus out JT squared. Then V squared is equal to U squared minus 2JH. As for S and H is just a symbol representation. Somebody else can maintain the same thing for us. It doesn't change anything. Now, when a body is thrown vertically upwards, when it gets to the maximum height, the final velocity becomes zero. So at, at the maximum height, B is equal to zero. A rocket was launched and reached a maximum height of 400. Meaning, by the time it's, it's, it reaches a maximum height of 400, its velocity has reduced drastically to zero. So at the maximum height, B is zero. If B is zero, then, we are asked to determine the velocity of projection u. So using this equation, in fact, we can use this for now until we find t. Okay, until we find t, uh, until we are able to find t, we have h 400 j 10, but we don't know u. We don't know t, so we can't use the math equation until we have found t. But we can use this to find u because at the maximum y, v is zero. So zero, there's no need of sparing zero because the value is the same. <laughs> it's equal to u squared minus two times 10 times 400. So do your multiplication. This is 8,000. We are looking for U. So let's 
use per stand alone, meaning we must take this to the other side of the equation. It is negative. When it crosses positive. So we have u squared equal to 8,000. Therefore, to find u, we need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And we have u equal to what you call 89.44 if I, if I got you right. So this is the velocity of projection. What's the second question? What's the second question? Second question is how long does it take to reach the maximum height? So, oh, thank you. So we are looking for the time taking to reach the maximum height. If you if you recall, if you recall, we derived a standard formula and we saw that the time taken to rate the maximum height is equal to u over g. If you don't want to use this, the alternative is that okay, use equation one. At the maximum height, the final velocity is zero. So zero is equal to u minus j t. Okay, we found u 89.44. J is 10 times t. Make t the subject. You have 10 t equal to 89.44. Therefore, when we divide through by 10, we have the time taken to reach the maximum height, which is 8.944 meter per second. Any question? Okay, I've sent, I've sent another question to the group, please check. And let's, let's go through it. A stone is thrown vertically upwards from the top of a tower 50 meter high with an initial velocity of 20.0 meter per second. Calculate I, the maximum height the stone reaches. I, I. The time it takes to reach the maximum height. And I, I, I. The total distance it covers. So this time around, the stone is thrown vertically upward from the top of a tower. In all the two examples we've gone through, the object is projected from the floor or the ground. This time, the stone is being thrown from the top of a tower. We went through the theory. So the tower certainly cannot be in the air. It will be built on the ground. So this is the ground. This is the tower. We are told the height of the tower is 50, 50 meter high. And a stone is being projected from the top of the tower. Maybe it was projected by Revoining Adam. Adam does the projection. Now we are to calculate for the maximum height the stone reaches. 
Then the time it takes to reach the maximum height. Then lastly, the total distance it covers. Take J as 10 meter per second squared. So I'm giving you six minutes to try, two minutes for each. No, no, I think six minutes is so much, five minutes. I'm giving questions on the platform. Yeah, it's on the platform. Um, Please. You just some to our private group. No, it's it's on the on the general platform. But should we submit it after doing it to the private group? No, we will discuss it. We will discuss it. I just want you to think think through it first. So Six minutes, start work. Just, just make me proud. <laughs> seven twenty one. So at exactly seven twenty seven, I'll come your way. Wait. And then, so a stone is thrown vertically upwards from the top of a tower 50 meters high with an initial velocity of 20. So the initial velocity given to the stone U is 20 meters per second. Calculate I, the maximum height, the stone Reaches and then I I the time it takes to reach the maximum height. So when when thrown with the velocity, they are looking for this the maximum height it could possibly reach, and that is the point where the final velocity V is equal to zero. Okay. That's the maximum height. So how do we determine maximum height? We, we've had, or we derive a standard formula that H maximum is equal to U squared over 2G. Or if you are, if you are using this, V squared U squared minus 2GH. At the maximum height, V is zero. So Zero is called u squared minus 2gh. When you make h the subject, you get this. Okay. So, to calculate for the maximum height, I need the square of the velocity of projection. So, 20 squared divided by 2 times 10. We're given, or oh, we're asked to take j to be 10 meter per second squared. So this is 20 meter. Because, um, because 20 squared is 20 by 20 divided by 20. You need not to square anything and then you, you, could, you should see it. So we have 20 meter to be the maximum height the stone reaches 10. The time it takes to reach the maximum height. For time taking to reach the maximum height, I think we also had a standard formula to wait. T is equal to U on, on G. So 20 divided by 10. So it will take two seconds to reach the maximum height. Please let me see by hands those of you who got the two questions correct. Let me see you. I need more hands. More hands. Okay, in fact, excellent. Excellent. It means we are really followed. Then the total distance. It 
a covers. Now, here the total distance it covers is about during the whole flight. When the object is thrown, or when the stone is thrown, you are not chasing it to catch it. So when it is thrown, it will get to a maximum height and then drop to the floor. So the whole distance, okay, taken, will be moving from the point where it is thrown, getting to the maximum height, getting to the maximum height, and then falling back to the ground is, is the total distance, okay? And so, let's look at something. If this is the maximum height, from where it is thrown, so from this two points, this becomes the maximum height, each mass. It will move from where the object is initially projected, travel this distance, and come to this point. Then from there, fall again, get to the same level where it was thrown, then cover the height of the tower before it drops to the ground. So total distance covered. is equal to two times h max, two times h max plus the height of the tower 50. h max 20, so two times 20 plus 50. Therefore, we have 90, meter will be the total distance covered. Let me see by hands those of you who got this right. More hands -o. Okay. All right. So if if you we couldn't figure that out, okay, you are one thrown. We are not chasing it to, to just catch it. If, if you are to catch it along, along the way, you'll be told. So we are looking at the time taken to reach the maximum height. When it gets to the maximum height, because its velocity is zero, it will drop again. Then get to the same level, then drop to the ground. So 20 plus another 20 plus the height of the tower, 50 making a total of 90. I'm adding another thing. What is the time of flight? Let's also calculate the time of flight. The total time taken from leaving, moving from here, reaching the maximum height, and then dropping to the ground starts where? Think through that in about three minutes' time. We are looking for the time of flight, which is the total time taken from the point where it is thrown, reaching the maximum that height. That needs to be what you said. Pardon? Please repeat what you just said. Uh, what I'm saying is that you have to calculate for the time of flight. Time of flight, which is the total time taken by the body during the whole flight. Meaning the time taken to move from here Read the maximum height, and from the maximum height, fall, get to the floor. That is what I'm requiring. So start with, let's see, three minutes. Time of flight.
Two minutes more. Two minutes. Time of time of flight question also goes. So the total time. So the body takes the time taken to move from here, from the point of projection to the maximum height we've calculated. And we got 20 over 10. That is two seconds. So it means we need a time taken to move from the maximum height to the ground. Okay. Now, when it is returning back to the ground, it is free falling. It is free falling. And if it is free falling, then it implies that the initial velocity is zero. So if I use H is equal to ut plus half gt squared. Knowing h, knowing that u is zero, it means I'll have h is equal to half gt squared. If h is equal to half gt squared, and I know h, h will be, this is 40 plus from, from, from the maximum height to this level, 20. Okay, so this is 20. 20 plus 50, 70 will be the height from the maximum height to, to this because the body is over here. We have this time, the time that to move from here and get here. We have it as two. Two seconds. So we, we are looking for the time taken to move from here through to the ground, meaning we are looking for the time taken to cover this height. And this vertical height from the maximum height to the ground is 70. Because this is 50. This is 20. Forget about the drawing. So 70 is equal to half by 10 times t squared. If I determine this t, I have the time taken to move from here to this point. So 1, 4, 0, or 70 by 2 divided by 10 will be equal to t squared. Therefore, I have t squared equal to 14. t is equal to the square root of 14. And class, what is the square root of 14? 3 point, 3 point what? 3 point 34. 3 point 4. 6, 6, 4. Oh, but some of you, your line breaks. So, please. 3.74. All right. So, it means. All right, I can meaning the time taken to move from here and get to this point is this. So the time of flight, therefore, will be equal to two, two seconds plus 3.74. And that is 5.74 seconds. So if, if it's taking that the total distance covered is 90. Then the total time taken to make that journey. Is that how? Um, Papa, I'll come again with your question. 5.74. Okay, so this will be the time of flight. Papa, I'll come again with your question. I don't understand how we got to the 70 and school right there. Oh, I was just trying to make T the subject. Okay, this is what I have. And I want T. So, anyway, anyway, another way out. I have this is 10 over 2. 
which is 5t squared, isn't it? 2 into this 5. So I have 5t squared. 70 is equal to 5t squared. When I divide 2 by 5, I have t squared is equal to what is, Papaya, what is 70 divided by 5? 14. That will be 14, right? Yes, please. And so the same, the same way. Therefore, t is square root of 14. And what you what you gave me. So this is how to get determine the time of flight for this. Let me see those of you who got this right. Okay. Two of you. Uh, oh, okay. Nice work. So that's it. That's it with, with um, free falling, a body, vertical upward and downward motion. I will send another question over the weekend so that you try your hands, okay? If you have any question, ask. If there is no question, we, we, we call it a day. Please, any question? No. All right. No, please. Uh, yes, man, the time of flight is a total time. You see, this is the whole flight. The flight is the journey. The journey starts from this point. The object was thrown from the tower. So the, the flight starts from here, goes on and on, gets to the maximum height, and then falls back to the floor. Okay. So the time of flight is the total time taken to do that, to move from here, get to the maximum height, from the maximum height, fall to the floor. That is the time of flight. Yes, are you okay? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. An assignment. I want you to draw a velocity time graph for a body projected from the ground and then gets to the maximum height and falls back to the ground. Let me put the question on the board. Draw a velocity time graph or sketch. Sketch a velocity time graph of a body projected projection drawn. from the ground which is the maximum height and falls back falls back to the ground. So sketch a velocity time graph of a body projected from the ground, reaches the maximum height, and falls back to the ground. I want a sketch of the velocity time graph. Okay. Okay. So, so this is where we end today's show. It's been exciting. I mean, seeing you all on the platform or hosting me. Please revise. Oh, when, uh, yeah, yeah. This is for your consumption. Just try it and let's see what you can produce. Okay. So give it a try, but please, you haven't been. Visiting the um uh, the YouTube channel. I'll give you Gabby, I'll give you the win.
please watch the video, send your comments, and then subscribe, and then like and share. Until we meet again, same time Monday. It wouldn't it wouldn't be the same time though. This is why I draw the curtains on our meeting. Take care of yourselves and have a very good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.